Hello guys, and before the video starts, I've been contemplating whether or not to um put this video out on my channel for like half a week because you see, I made a stupid mistake in the video, okay? Actually two stupid mistakes. First things first the m smaller mistake was the fact that I didn't like water test the seal before filling it up with ca with I didn't water test the seal with like normal water before filling it up with like chemicals, which was kind of stupid because I had to fix that while the electrolysis rig was still running, and I did that with the flex seal. And second thing, second, the second stupid mistake that I made was I used balloons. And you see, the problem with this is that since they produce so much pressure, um, and I only had one side covered with the balloon. Um, it pushes that side's water level down and pushes water into the other side of the electrolysis rig since it is a double cell um, and causes the other side to flood and it caused a bunch of problems. So nonetheless, that is the biggest mistake that I made in this video. <laughs> and um, I strongly suggest using a garbage bag instead of a balloon to fill up your electrolysis rig. Um, like what I've seen some other videos like on Cody's lab and stuff of people making similar electrolysis rigs and doing the, something similar to that. So I strongly suggest using something to store the hydrogen gas that doesn't produce so much <laughs> um, pressure. So nonetheless, after that is cleared up, let's get to the video. If you remember my very first video on this channel, I made a um, video on how to build, convert baking soda into sodium hydroxide using the electrolysis but unfortunately I actually took apart that electrolysis rig because it was an open top which meant a lot of things first things first it leaked deadly hydrogen gas second thing second it used a salt bridge which was is a relatively inefficient method of um, a double cell electrolysis rig nowadays people use membrane cells which are much more efficient and third things third that electrolysis rig um, it did not create the products that it created were contaminated since it had an open top and it was able to like leak in gas and it also like leaked out fluid. So I decided to go for a different electrolysis rig approach. Um, now you see for this approach I am going to use um, plastic instead of glass since I am going to be drilling through the center of it and it's a lot easier to drill through plastic rather than glass. But the thing about this plastic, now you might be thinking to yourself you might be thinking to yourself that this plastic right here, um, like plastic isn't chemically resistant enough to hold chemicals, right? Sorry, my dog's barking. But you might think that plastic isn't chemically resistant enough to hold chemicals. But you'd be wrong. Certain plastics are very chemically resistant. Certain plastics aren't, like the ones you use to make water bottles. But this number two recyclable plastic, high density polyethylene, is used to make acetone bottles, hydrogen peroxide bottles. It's used to make bottles for anything, any dangerous chemicals that you might have in your house. So like bleach, nail polish remover, anything like that is made of number two recycled plastic. And if you're not sure, you can just look on the bottom and see the number two symbol. So this is the plastic that I'm going to be building my electrolysis rig out of. And now let's get into it. Now first thing first, um, you're going to need to get two bot. If you're going to want to build a double cell electrolysis rig instead of a single cell for whatever reason, possibly to collect the hydrogen on its own because I want to start an um, a element collection series where I collect all the elements on the periodic table in a pure form and start an element collection to show it off and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, nonetheless, if you want to build a double cell electrolysis rig, First things first, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that they can, you to pick two bottles of about the same height and size. This 3% hydrogen peroxide is about double the size, but it's about the same height. I'm probably going to replace this with another 100% nail polish remover bottle eventually, but I haven't gotten to it yet, but nonetheless. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this bottle and you're going to need to get a tape measure and a sharpie marker. Okay, so I've got this crummy ruler that's made out of paper, but nonetheless, it's about six inches from bottom to top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this perfectly aligned with the bottom, and I'm going to draw 
a little dashed line, about a little dot about three inches from the top, I mean bottom. And do the same to the other side. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to use a straight edge or something like that to draw a line in between the two dots. Now that this line is drawn, I'm going to measure the exact middle of the line. Okay, the exact middle of the line turned out to be 1.25 inches. So that's good. Now that that is measured, I am going to take this bottle and remove the label because this is going to be the center part to the electrolysis rig. Actually, before I remove the later bill, I'm going to cut it off on each side about at the point of the label. Now what you've got to do is drill it. I've drilled a 1 16th guide hole and now I'm going to work my way up. 5 64ths, 3 32s, 7 64s, 1 8th, 964s, 532s, 1164s, 316s, 732s, 1 4th, 516s. And I'm going to stop there because that's about the size of this baby's guide hole. So now I'm going to drill with this. Okay, so as you can see, I drilled this thing, and now I've got to get a pipe that fits properly in there. Preferably, you're going to want to use some, like, acrylic pipe or something. I was thinking about just cutting a pill bottle in half, but I don't really want to do that. I'd rather just use an acrylic pipe or something. So what I've done here is I've used hot water from my coffee machine to, um, I put the pipe end in the hot water, and it softened up the pipe and shrunk the pipe so that I could fit it in here. And now there's a nice tight fit. Not necessarily watertight, but we're going to fix that in a minute with Flex Seal. But before we do that, we're going to want to cut this pipe down to size. I'm going to use a hacksaw, but you could use any saw, really. Now that it is cut down to size with a box cutter, we could start gluing it. Now you see, we're going to not only want a glue that's strong, such as, like, for instance, JB Weld. We're going to also want a glue that is chemically resistant, and that's why I'm using Flex Seal. Flex Seal is silicone, um, and you could just use normal silicone if you had that. Um, I don't have the silicone machine, so unfortunately. Well, at least I don't know where my dad put it, and I've got this Flex Seal that I want to use up since I lost the top, and uh, it's like drying out, so yeah, that's why I'm using First, I want have some super glue that I would like to use up. I'm just going to use the super glue to like reinforce it because Flex Seal doesn't create the strongest bonds as I learned when I worked with it for building my airlock. I actually had to reinforce the Flex Seal with um, hot glue. But nonetheless, yeah, I'm going to put on the Flex Seal after this. Okay, good. Now that it's super glued, let's wait for it to dry. While the super glue is drying, I tried to drill a hole in this, but I didn't start with a guide hole, and this is how it ended up. I'll have to flip this over and try again at just the right place. Now I have drilled this out, and before I completely attach it to this thing, I'm going to need to do a little modification. Okay, now this is a little bit awkward. Now you see, I don't really have sodium polyacrylate, but I know that it's in diapers and also these things. So, yeah, I've never really... I'm going to need to tear this apart to build my membrane cell electrolysis rig. Okay, let's take this plastic off first off. Um, and this is all sticky. I don't know. I'll figure it out. So I was able to extract the innards from this tampon quite easily, but it doesn't fit in here super well, so I'm going to have to get another maxi to do this. Well, maybe I could use this thing. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to put this guy inside of this guy, and I'm pretty sure this will do. Just got to shove it in there now. Okay, good. That seems like a nice fit. Now, my water is kind of cold now, so... I'm going to go and get some more water, some more hot water from my water pitcher. Okay, now that I've gotten this fitted inside of here, you can kind of see how this 
uh, blocker is like stretching to fill the gap since it's got the sodium polyacrylate in it. I saw the little beads forming. It's really cool. Um, nonetheless, uh, now I've got my membrane cell electrolysis rig pretty done. Now I've only got to glue this and then put the water in and possibly make some tops. Okay, so as you can see, I have made the bridge. And although my uh, caulking job is a little messy, it'll do. And it's relatively easy to remove this stuff after it dries, although it's difficult when it's still drying. So I'll just remove some of this stuff, some of the mess after it dries. But while that's drying, I've got to build some tops for this because um, I want to build some tops nonetheless. Let's get into it. I want it to not... I'm going to build some tops because I don't only want it to let out air, but it's also got a, a wire down in there to um, act as the electrodes. So, yeah. Let's do that. Okay, so time to insert the copper cathode into this side. In the moment of truth. Ah, yes, it is bubbling. Great. Now let's slide the top. Uh, okay, now that I've got the balloon hooked up, let's leave it running and see if it fills up the balloon with hydrogen. Tune into my next video where I, um do my very first collecting the elements video where I collect hydrogen gas um, for the first member of my element collection. Guys, what did you guys think? Um, nonetheless, th if you were just here to see the electrolysis rig, uh, hope you enjoyed. If you want to, like, join my channel and stuff, like and subscribe. But for my subscribers, um, I have some explaining to do. You see, I said that I was going to go back to the one video a week on Friday schedule, but I decided on a new schedule, okay? I'm going to do a video once a week on Friday, and I'm also going to do a video on Tuesday every whenever I can. Meaning that, like, if I... I'm always going to do videos on Friday, one video every Friday, but if I can also do another video in the week, I will do it on Tuesday, I will post the video on Tuesday. So, nonetheless, hope you enjoyed, and um, hopefully um, I can do more videos on Tuesdays. Um, and see you in the next video, hopefully, if you enjoyed.